Farms Farm, a local farm here in Sanderton with Dan Ponche. And we're going to talk about everything that you can about food. And we're going to start off with organic versus non-organic and anything else that can do with sustainability and greenness of growing food. Hi, Dan. Hi. How long have you guys been around here now in Sanderton? Uh, well, here at, at this location, it'll, it'll be almost 30 years oh, for me. Goodness. But my at my dad's location at Lucato, he's been there for over, over 50 years. What are some of the foods that we could buy now? Well, we're, we're starting to pick quite a bit of broccoli okay. already. I, I, and, and to grow earlier uh, crops, I cover them with that floating roll cover, that white fabric you see uh, in fields from a distance. It's, it keeps a, it's a remake cloth that keeps, lets water through it, but it keeps a lot of heat in there. So it makes it, that's how we can get some earlier crops. So I got broccoli that way earlier than normal, and I got beans as well. They're already started, so. And you are open in the winter season as well. Yes, yeah, we're we're already we're freezing uh, things like uh, we'll, we'll freeze things like strawberries and raspberries and blueberries. Not all your food is organic. What is the difference between growing organic versus the non-organic? Well, if it's to be true organic, it means that there is no uh, chemical fertilizers, okay. even no sprays that are. There are some that are organic. There are some organic sprays that can be applied. But um, I've gone the route with our vegetables uh, to just, I don't grow a huge amount. I grow enough for our market here. So I just, uh, we, we don't um, use weed killers and we don't spray them for anything else. So um, we may have to use some fertilizers, but mostly I use chicken manure on okay. that. Uh, so it is, you know, sort of organic. It's different in Canada the regulations than they are in the United States. Right. They're not exactly the same. So what is allowed here in Canada uh, might be uh, more stringent rules than there is in the U.S. Certified organic is quite the process, of course. Right. And there are farms around here that certainly have done it. And uh, uh, since I can do that that way, and then uh, apples, I cannot grow completely organic because there's too many fungus uh, fungus diseases and that. So, But uh, of course, uh, that's uh, if we do have to treat the the trees is mostly done in the early springtime. It's not done for months before the fruit is harvested, so. Okay, but just to be totally clear, you're not using like the, the GMOs and the GEs no. that we're hearing, anything like no, that. No. So even though when you say you use some fertilizer, it's still. No, that's, those, those, that's applying to seeds. Yes. Uh, but uh, still, uh, you know, the, the, that's uh, some scary stuff. These are um, large farms that need to um, the, everything has to be, be uh, accounted for you know it has to be so much production and this and that we 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 are just a smaller farm and we want to we eat what we grow yes. we want to, we want to be as careful as we can with everything we want and we know that people care about that so we are more and more careful about everything that we do to our uh, crops. And I had a look around you, the, the grocery st uh, store part of your market as well, and everything says organic on it, like everything mm -hmm. that you sell is, and is that how you buy your your non-produce, Is has to have the certified organic on it? Uh, some some of it is certified organic, and some are just from ourselves, our, our vegetables and that, uh, that have no sprays on them. Uh, so, um, uh, and we are getting a few things from other growers that, that are also uh, very small growers that are not treating them at all. Everybody's reading labels and everybody's uh, a lot more conscious of what goes into their bodies. Way more, but even more so, I find, in where we live down here. If you go to other parts of the country, I don't think it's anything like it. Uh, we're, we're way more yes. health conscious, yes. I yes. think. I think so too. In yes. this part of the world. Now, I just thought I would just leave on this because I, I'm, a, I'm curious. Is there any um, regulations that you have to follow, like whether federal or provincial, to, to grow y uh, your food here? There, there is, uh, but um, it's, it's um, not a case of that there's a lot of, uh, of people checking on what's going on. They, they, can, they come and they take some samples of some projects to see if there's any residues. In, in the crop. Thank you so much, Dan, for Thank giving you. us so much information and, and educating us on where our food actually comes from. With the Redmar Market, we try and purchase as much locally as possible. Um, with fresh produce on the island, it is tough to source produce year-round. So there's certain times of the year where we will have a lot more local than we will, um, say, in December, January. 
So yeah, this time of the year is a perfect time where we have lots of the local farms and we're trying to support them as much as possible, um, where we get strawberries, rhubarb, lettuce, just some amazing products. Um, and what we try and do is we highlight that at our stores where we have a local board that we're making it very easy for our consumers to have the choice to support the local uh, Vancouver Island economy from a farm point of view. So Vantrite Farms, uh, a very well-known farm, obviously since 1884, uh, and, and they they source and grow a lot of produce that we obviously like to support. Sometimes it is a little more expensive to purchase local, but they need to make a living, obviously, yes. to farm the land. It gets smaller and smaller um, as a, a farm base, so we, we need to support them. There's probably 30 different farms that we'll support at any given time of the year from a produce point of view. Um, we do source some of our meats locally. We uh, support um, a chosen um, pork, so our pork comes from a chosen um, our chicken comes from Duncan, from uh, Island Farmhouse Poultry. There's only a, a few um, grocery stores now, they're all owned nationally. Yes. So the local island grown, island raised, were, uh, my partners were all from Victoria, uh, born and raised. So, you know, we're true to the local business and, and we like to support the, the local farms and like I say, the, um, the people that are help growing this. Right. And, and it gives another choice, another option. And keeping the money here. Keeping in the community. money here, that's right. <laughs> Creating some employment. <laughs> We want to be very honest with what we're we're trying to say, and, and our values line up with with our our uh, the philosophy of the Red Bar Market. So again, we want to source where possible first, island grown, island raised. Sometimes though, we do have to source off the island. The one thing that we do showcase in our case, anything on our that we do within our stores, and again, that's island grown or raised, will be done with a black tag. So any consumers that comes in this to the store versus. Um, meat that is a triple A product, which would just be straight commodity beef that could be from Alberta right. or wherever else, um, not necessarily from the island. So with a lot of our products, you'll see that it's either made at our smokehouse, which is at Van Elman uh, on Glanford and Van Elman in Victoria, where we have two large smokers that smoke our turkey, meat, uh, a lot of different products, our cheese, pepperonis, all, a lot of the products in our deli case. So this is um, our, a smoked eating. We have five different varieties from uh, an aged cheddar right the way through uh, a jalapeno Havarti. And we nice. put it into a cheese sock in our smokehouse. Goes through the smoker for about four to six hours and it comes out with this funny shaped sort of cheese ball. Ah. And uh, it's an amazing product that uh, again, it's done, finished here locally. And um, it's one of our signature products, but yeah, for sure. It's really good. So yeah, it is. It's great cheese. Um, and again, it's one of the about 100 products that we'll produce at that Van Alman location. And and uh, a lot of our meat, and well, obviously cheese, but a lot of our meat would be gluten free. So there's there's no um, no gluten in our products, uh, and that goes for all the items in our smokehouse. I know it makes me feel more comfortable buying things that are local and that are aligning with our values and I really, really see that with, with, with you folks here. Yeah, so. and, and we're trying to get it from the farm to the plate. So where we can, yes. from that island raised to the island grown. From the grown, farm to the plate, you love betcha. it. And then we can tell the story of if, who the local farmer is, if it's Van Trace or if it's um, a chosen pork, whoever that supplier may be, we can tell the story behind that and with confidence let our consumers know what they're purchasing. Yes, I like that. And as I'm walking around here, I had no idea that you guys do coffee. Oh, what yeah. don't you guys do? <laughs> There's a fair amount of private label products that we are starting to venture into. Obviously, we have a coffee, um, our spices, um, products that are produced in our smokehouse. So it's it's growing. You know, there, there's there has been a, a shift from the traditional grocery yes. store back to sort of the farm market. It's yes. it's smaller. It's a little more intimate. It's a yes. different setting. Um, we have a lot of customers that come in and they'll have a coffee. We make amazing oh, tall as a barn lunch. sandwiches. So people come in and they have an experience. They have a coffee. They have lunch. It's a gathering place. A lot of gluten-free products, again, we try and source where we can um, from Victoria or from the island. So we're, you're not going to find Fruit Loops and you probably won't find uh, conventional grocery store items here. Being small, we're very flexible and we can bring in products quite easily at a, a small level. Our carbon footprint is small because we're bringing in product from markets that are five kilometers away, not five hours away or five days away. So there's more nutrients as the product is very fresh, right out of the ground and in our stores. Right. Um, so for, for us, we do have conventional produce, we have organic produce, and we have local. So we have a wide variety of um, options. I don't find 
your price is that much more because I mean cost is important, especially for families and stuff. I don't find it that much more than going to a grocery store. I actually kind of find it on par. Well, we're if we check our prices, generally speaking, we are cheaper than most markets in Greater Victoria. Yes. Uh, from a conventional gro grocery store, we we really really make sure that our prices are low, and we've got to you know that's how people view us as that farm market. You may not get the the, the picture ready apple but you'll get a great apple and the price reflects that. So we really want to be competitive in our marketplace and I think we've done a really good job as a company um, managing that fine line where there's great quality and there's value with that quality. Um, and we're going to continue to do that as our philosophy. We started off with the farm, went to the mar farmer's market, and now we're with Dallas Bull, uh, who is a family-owned uh, bistro, winery, and bakery. So we have uh, uh, four acres of grain that we uh, grow here, or wheat that we grow and mill on site for our pizza dough and our breads and pies. We have uh, 400 blueberry plants, that uh, pies and uh, uh, sauces and uh, uh, all sorts, and drinks. We got uh, two acres of grapes that we make our uh, wine with and um, wine coolers. And uh, we have some sheep and chickens and uh, pheasants. On the peninsula, there is a lot of local food here, which is, which is nice. Well, I don't know if you heard, uh, I don't know what the exact stats are, but uh, 1900s, it, we, we grew 85% of what we uh, consumed yes. here. And now the last I heard was around five or 6%. Because you were the bread basket in the 1900s. Well, that's right. <laughs> So the best part is to make food. So here we are, we keeping with our, our local, our organic, farm fresh, uh, 100 mile diet. So we're gonna make a pizza. Fantastic. Well, Rick here, yeah, he's got the pizza. This is, uh, we mill the uh, grain, and then uh, we have the bakers make the, uh, the dough at night. We let it proof. And then uh, Rick rolls it out and uh, makes a pizza. We're definitely striving for the one mile diet as much as possible. We've got pizza from our flour. We've got uh, all sorts of vegetables. Uh, we've got a new garden going up top there from potatoes, herbs. Actually, all the herbs, that the basil is all grown. Actually, Rick pulls it right off the plant over there and puts it on the top. Now, wood-fired oven. Why a wood-fired oven? The best pizza is coming from. It's done out of a, a wood-fired pizza oven in Italy. We have live music Thursday, Friday, and Saturday when uh, weather permits. Today they might be wearing an umbrella. Yes. Father's Day we had all the cars out here and, and people could go out and see it and see the farm. The giant pumpkins, a thousand pounds. Uh, we usually carve. It's a lot of the fun things. If you actually thought about how much work it is, then it wouldn't be as much fun. You're still part of it. Your children are part of Absolutely. it. So My daughter comes and every time she's here, she goes and picks the eggs. She's four and a half and oh she's goodness. that's her job. Aww. She knows where to get them, <laughs> open the door, wash them, put them in the cartons, and uh, it's all a lot of fun. Of course it's good. Very good. We are in the bakery here. It's a busy little hot spot here. It does not matter what time of day, if you come in the morning or the afternoon, it is always busy here. So we were out in the fields, we saw where the grain came from, we saw how it was milled, and now the finished product. Yeah, well we've got some loaves of bread, we've got some pies and all sorts of treats. We are in the bar part of the bistro because we're going to end on the good part, the wine. It's Not, all good It's parts. all good part. I can't say that. Yeah, because the food's all good. It's all yeah. good here. <laughs> Organically <laughs> speaking, yes. So, and this is organic wine. Can I use the word organic? It's, it's not certified, okay. but we, it's all organic practices. Tell us about what the wines, that, the kind of wines that you have here. Sure. Well, this one here is uh, what we predominantly do is, is the uh, Highland House wine is, uh, wineries are, the farm wineries, what we operate under, under the Roos banner. And it's a cigarette. As I was mentioning, it's a victory vine. And this is our 2011. Uh, we'll be bottling our 2012 in the fall. And with this type, we also have a, um, a sparkling version of it. Maybe, Haley, you can pour me up a sparkling version. So you have it all on tap, too? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. And that gets rid of the bottles, too, as you uh, were saying right. earlier. Yes. I think you're going to see in the next 10 years, there's going to be very few bottles out there. And we also have our red uh, the, with the 2011 uh, Little Red Combine. And uh, Haley's got here right now. And uh, you asked me a bit before about the service of it. Yes. Now, we have what's called a picnic endorsement and a tour endorsement. Oh, okay. Now, with that, we're uh, not allowed to serve to the table, so people have to come up to the, to the bar here, and that's, but that's a little bit to our advantage. Now we have you, Haley Keir can tell you the story of what we're growing, what we're doing. I can't go wrong with local wine. That's right. It's our blueberries grown just uh, behind us, and uh, our flour milled, and... Um, I'm gonna try a little bit. Mm. Mm. 
Very good. Very good. A glass of white mm. wine. So we can only serve uh, BC wine and cider, but right. with that, we're able to do a, a world of, uh, uh, of different drinks. We have um, uh, white wine mojito, we're red wine Caesar, and uh, so we have local raspberries from down the way. We have mint that we grow just outside the door that we pluck off there. There's basil, uh, there's um, a dill for the uh, red wine Caesar, and uh, so I, I'm really excited how well that's taken off. We don't sell wine, we sell the passion farm experience. We have vineyards, wood fired ovens here, roaming sheep, signature cocktails. You need to come out here and check them out.